Hello, this is Chris, aka iForce2D, and for most of this year I've been working on a dedicated Box2D editor uh, to edit Box2D scenes, obviously, and save these as a textual format that you can load into your program and do cool things with. So the program itself is pretty much ready. Uh, there's just a, quite a lack of documentation uh, at the moment, so I'm still working on that, and then hopefully we can uh, release it properly. So, yeah, it's a, it's a really cool editor, of course. Um, so I thought it's about time I made a video just to explain a few things. Um, not really super detailed things, but um, really just to explain where this would fit into the overall workflow if you are making a game and what it's good for, uh, what you can do with it, why you might want to use it, and so on. So, um, a couple of days ago, I got this question here on Twitter asking, well, asking that, obviously. And this is a bit of a silly question because, of course, of course, Rube can do that. Uh, it's an extremely simple little level here. So I thought, well, this is uh, a good thing to start with and do a beginning to end run through one example of using Rube to create a game level and export the code and then read the output that Rube made into your program and do something interesting with it. So uh, that's what we're going to do in this video. And although I will be looking at uh, the usage of Rube, uh, quite a bit of it actually, and I will be also doing quite a bit of um, coding to use the output that Rube made, use the JSON file. Um, this video is not supposed to be a tutorial in either of those things, so we'll be going pretty quickly through everything. Um, but hopefully you'll get an idea of where where the uh, this tool fits into your, your workflow. So what I did was I just took a screenshot of this um, image here and I used the GIMP of course to cut out uh, some images here, uh, background, stars and so on and I just put these in the folder here so that's what we're going to start with and then later on probably in a second video I think um, we will look at this other folder here that I have which this comes with the Rube source code uh, with the Rube program when you download it and this is basically just the box2d source code plus uh, some files that um, show how to load a uh, Rube level into, uh, in this case they're loading them straight into the Box2D testbed as a, as a demonstration and that's a demonstration of C++ loading of course that's, uh, that's what that is so we'll get to that later. So for now um, we're just going to, oh, where's Rube, I don't have a Rube, Wait a second, there. Okay, so this is uh, this is Rube here, and there's a bunch more um, sort of uh, what have we got here? A bunch more panels that we won't be looking at for this demo, <coughs> but we'll be just using the properties one, I think. So new new scene, and I'll drag and drop these in here. we're pretty much done with this so what have we got here just a bunch of images at the moment and we can see that when we drop these images in they're all starting off at the same size they start off at uh, one height of one unit in the physics world uh, obviously we don't want them to stay that way because the ball is about the same size as the entire level so first things first we'd like to make the level at the right size uh, so that we can fit everything into it. Uh, the ball as it happens is about the right size. We want to keep that as it is because it's one, it's a diameter of one which is the size that Box2D likes to have things. Um, it's good for, for stability, floating point and so on. So we're going to scale the level to fit around that. And I'm just going to put a cursor there so that oops, sorry. so that the level scales around this point and that's 
uh, about right there, isn't it? Yep, that'll do. So, get rid of these. And I'll also keep the level, the middle of the level, around about the zero, zero, the origin point in the world, because this gives us nicer floating point precision closer to zero. Not really that important, but just something to think about if you have a chance. So next thing I'm going to do is I just want to check the rendering order of these images because uh, we can set the rendering order back to front. And obviously we want the background here to be right at the back, so I'll make that something that's guaranteed to be at the back. And we can still see that the hmm, background is rendering through Mr. Blobby here. Uh, that's because all the images are currently rendering at 50% opacity, so we'll just make them all re render at full opacity, and then we'll be able to check our render ordering a little bit better. So the funnel, this funnel piece uh, should go on top of the blob. In fact, it should go on top of everything really. So we'll make it make that like 100 as well, and. Um, star and the blob, let's see this blob, we'll try and make the blob go on top of the star, so we'll give him 10, and then the wall, the wall, we'd also like the wall to go on top of the blob, so we'll make him, we'll have to make him 20 now, don't we? Okay, so that just uh, makes things a little bit easier to see. Alright, this piece here is going to go here, like that, uh, like that, that uh, looks lovely doesn't it, okay, now we still haven't made any physics yet have we, let's do that, this is the easiest one to start with, we will make a body with a circle fixture here, and at this point I will open up a, uh, a player view, so we have our same view here, but it's a player view, it's a little bit different because we can run the world and play around with it. If you've ever used the Box 2D testbed, you'll be very familiar with this. And uh, yeah, that allows us to test, um, test everything immediately. And we can see at the moment the images are simply backing images at the moment. They don't, they don't do anything apart from sit there. So what we really want to do is um, make this image attached to uh, what happened here? to this body, and then if we reload the world again, we should. Oh, that didn't work. What happened there? goes on to that one. Right? Oh, okay. I'm not sure what happened there, but... Oh, I didn't reload it, that's why. <laughs> yeah, I forgot to reload it, sorry. Okay, so now we can see the images attached to the body. Not in the right place yet, but uh, that's easy fixed. There we go, and I think I'll tile these images, uh, tile these views so we can see that a little bit easier. And this time, I will definitely reload. There we go. So now the body is attached to the image, or the image is attached to the body rather. And come back in here, and next one up is this. And I'm going to make this a body with a <laughs> nope. This a body with a square fixture, and I'm going to take this body and I'm going to squeeze it that way, and then I'm going to rotate it and I'm going to put it on here and scale it down a little bit, and that's that's probably okay really for the uh, for the purposes of the game, but just to illustrate the way the program can give us a very easy way of making convex, sh uh, no, um, concave shapes. That's what I'm doing here, isn't it? Concave shapes. 
uh, we can add vertices in here like this and then we can move them around like this to our heart's content and we don't need to worry that the shape is not a concave shape because the program will figure that out for us and create the concave <laughs> the convex shapes that we need automatically so if we run this now up here we should see these are the final shapes that will be output by the uh, program when we export it so this is what you'll be loading in your game these actual convex shapes and they'll they'll be uh, guaranteed to be convex and they'll be uh, I think at the moment it's set to be a maximum of eight vertices so you won't have any problems with the standard box 2d um, library right image should be parented to that body. Now let's check if that worked. Yep, okay. That image is on there. Now this body, I said this body, is going to go here-ish and it's going to be rotated like that-ish and it's going to be scaled like uh, that-ish. That's good enough. Oh, and it should be a static body, right? So we'll make a static body, and just to uh, check that that worked all right, we will bang the ball against there and check that we can't get through. Oh, great. Exactly what we wanted. Now, it doesn't really matter that there's no... I mean, it doesn't really matter that... the back of this matches up perfectly, so just to illustrate that, oops, I will put these points like way out there just to make absolutely sure that the ball is not going to get through. So your physics shapes and your images don't really need to match up as meticulously as I did there sometimes. Okay, what's next? I'll tell you what's next. We are going to make a uh, what's it called loop, a loop shape to define the edges of the inside of this uh, little tunnel. So we'll put that on another body, and we'll make a body here. It doesn't really matter where it is. It's a body with no fixtures. This body, and we will add. First thing we will do, oh, first thing we'll do is make it static. That's the first thing we'll do. And then we have this image here and this image here that will be parented to that body. It's not really necessary, but it can be handy if you want to scale the whole level up or down uh, after you've completed it. It's handy to have images on a body. So I will just put them onto that body and just to check that that's what I wanted. Okay, there we go. And just check that it's a static body will run. Okay, it's not falling down. That's good. Now, select this here and we want a fixture and we want an edge fixture. So this is an edge fixture. We can move vertices around like this. Uh, we can also add vertices in here as we did for the polygon. And in the case of edges, uh, we can do something else too. We can we can draw kind of uh, not quite freehand, but you know free points if you like. And to define where we want the shape to go. So I'll start with something like that and we'll put this here and we'll put that like this. That can be there, there, there and continue onwards. 
so this is going to be a real rough job. that like that like that like that I want to make sure this last part is sloped otherwise we <laughs> might end up with this lobby just getting stuck and I don't really want that to be quite that steep either um, okay now to close this off here we can select the fixture as a whole and say that we actually wanted this to be a loop now, another th nice thing about this program is that even though it's a loop, uh, we could just change it to a polygon like that pretty easily. So now it's a polygon. Um, but we didn't want it to be a polygon, we wanted it to be a loop. And now we should uh, give this a try here. We'll put Mr. Blobby in there and see if he does what he's supposed to do. He doesn't get stuck or anything. And he, when he gets to here, he correctly looks like he's going into the uh, funnel at the bottom. That looks good. And what's next? Uh, we'll put Mr. Blobby there. Give Mr. Blobby's fixture a little less friction. Oh, no, it's okay. Stars. Oh no no. Uh, getting ahead of myself here. What's next? Let's do. Let's place another fixture to function as the goal in the bottom here, and it will be add fixture square. Doesn't really matter what it is, but uh, I'll make it a square, uh, and I will. What will I do? I will bring it down here and I will scale it in the x dimension. Scale x. Oh, like that. And we just want to make it cover that area there so that uh, like that. And we want it to be a sensor and it's going to be the goal so when the ball hits this we will determine that the, the level is complete and to that end we also need to start giving things some names this fixture is going to be the goal um, the body here is going to be called ball or blob this one's going to be called wall and we no need some stars now. So I actually, I might just save this while we're at it. Save. So I'm going to save it next to this folder with the images, and it's going to be called level one. Right now, uh, okay, we need to give this a body. Well, we need to give it a fixture at least, but we're going to give it a body, um, and we're going to give it a circle and we're going to scale that down to something like that actually I'll make it a little bit smaller and I'll just demonstrate one thing that's quite handy that you can do here is if I just borrow Mr. Blobby for a second we can determine where we want this to detect that the blob has hit the star and I think in most cases we'd want to make it around about where the user thinks it would hit uh, the player, I should say. So that would be about there, wouldn't it? Alright, thank you. Now, how many of these do we need? Oh, first let's put the image onto the body. And let's check that we got that right. Yep, that looks right. Now, how many of these do we want? We want... Oh, did you guess three? You guessed three, didn't you? Hmm, I don't know. Let's see, one, two, six. Uh, we want six of these. 
understood it was going to be three, didn't you? And we'll put these down here like that, like that, and then like that, ish, somewhere like that. And they need to be static bodies. We'll make them static bodies so they don't fall down. And we'll make the fixtures for each of them sensors. And finally, we'll give them names. Body. This is going to be star one. This is going to be star two. That's star three. Right. So what are these for then? Oh, hang on a minute. Let's just check that they don't fall down. Let's just check that that's right. Okay, Blobby falls, these guys fall, these ones do not fall. And we can see by the dashed lines here that they are sensor fixtures, as for this one here as well. It's a sensor fixture. So back up here, we are going to put these on here. Yep. Now what we're going to do with this, or these bodies, is we're just going to put them in this place to start with and then we're going to load the level and then we're going to just delete them, uh, destroy the bodies but not before we've checked their position so we're going to load the level, check the position of each one of these and then destroy them, so all we want to know is the position but this is a very handy way of doing it because uh, you can visually check things before you load the level it's going to be called star home one, two, and three. Two and star home three. Mm, save that. And we should have a name for everybody now, right? What's that? Oh, <laughs> dynamic body two is actually static body two, which is the ground. So let me just think if we have forgotten anything. Uh, so what's going to happen when we load the level is we're going to load in the names, uh, we're going to load in the bodies of these named items here and we're going to get the positions for those and then when the user does something we're going to just destroy this wall and let the ball roll down here. Uh, so let's just check that the ball will roll through those as we expected. Uh, okay, so there's a problem already. A good, good thing we checked that. I seem to have duplicated one too many stars there. How did I do that? I've got two star home threes. Oh, I'll delete that one. Alright, let's try that again. Okay, so definitely only three bodies there now. Now, Mr. Blobby is, uh, we'll just check that he can fall through all of those stars uh, there. And, okay. I think that's about it. Probably forgotten something, but um, we'll come across that. Uh, when we try and load this in and, and make it run. Oh, I've forgotten to put that there. <laughs> you can make it start so it's sitting there. So it doesn't really doesn't really move much at the beginning. That's nice. And then if we turn the uh, fixtures and the bodies and stuff off like that. Oh, uh, not like that. Okay, this lets us see the pure, just the box 2D bodies only, fixtures only. Not really what I was trying to do. What I was trying to do was turn off the fixtures and the bodies. Okay, that lets us see what things would look like uh, without all the 
debug draw stuff on top. So I think we are done for this point. I'm pretty sure I've forgotten something. Anyway, uh, so that that's the end of this video. And in the next video, we're going to uh, load this in and do something cool with it uh, in, in the program itself. So for that, we're going to have to just go back here, uh, save, and I will also export the scene to raw info. Now raw info is the actual convex polygons and so on that you will need to use uh, when you're loading these into your program, rather than these convex polygons that the program stores in its file to reload this scene. So save raw info. Um, I want to save it in the same folder here and I want to call it the same name as that so I'll just click save and we should be done now. Okay so that's the rube file that will let us load in the scene again into the editor that is and this here is uh, just a regular JSON file that you will use to load into your game. So just have a quick look at that. Um, that. So it's just a JSON file, just a text file, nothing too complex. JSON is pretty commonplace file format these days. Uh, if you're using JavaScript, this is actually JavaScript too, so it's quite should be quite handy to write a JavaScript importer. Okay, so that's it. Uh, I'll see you in the next video.